Uh, hey, uh, welcome. So uh, next one of our series. Um, this one's a bit on JNet. Now, what's JNet? Um, JNet is a way of classifying the surface pattern of polyps. And actually, you can make JNet a little bit easier by really just focusing on is the pattern regular? Is the pattern um, lost some of its structure or is it completely irregular? Now I'm looking in white light at three polyps in the rectum. Um, come back to the anal verge always to figure out where you're on the rectum. You can clearly see the hemorrhoids, squamous columnar junction, first rectal fold uh, uh, here, uh, second rectal fold where these lesions are on the rectal sigmoid junction in the distance. So if two, three, I think, polyps in the rectum. Look at the first one, look at the structure. If you're not sure about something, freeze it. Don't just sit there and let it move. Right now you can properly analyze it, like your brain's really focused on the structure. And the structure is regular. Uh, and then we, we, we can confirm that by looking, uh, highlighting the blood vessel pattern with, uh, in this case, narrowband imaging, but virtual chromatography, completely regular, right? Okay, next one. I uh, won't turn off the virtual chromatography. I don't think we need to. Let's focus on this other polyp. We're looking for the area that's most disordered. Really important concept when you're looking at polyps. Look for the most disordered area. There is no point in analyzing a beautifully regular structured part of a polyp if part behind it is, um, is irregular. So let's zoom in, let's say here potentially. We can go uh, more near focus. The cap's useful just to um, sort out the distance. And again, you can say that this is pretty regular, although uh, potentially some irregularities creeping into the blood vessel pattern. It's certainly not totally disordered. So you would be forgiven for either calling that uh, regular, completely regular, um, JNET 2A, or uh, losing a bit of structure potentially here uh, with a bit of increased caliber of the vessels, JNET 2B. And then you have this. Uh, so this lesion looks very different to the others. Um, we'll just come up on it. Uh, you can already see it coming into the cap, but remember to freeze to get your brain in, right? So get a good image and freeze. Okay, so, okay, I've had a look at that. That looks relatively regular, but there's some irregularity creeping in. Is that whole thing like that? And uh, you can see the use of the cap here. Maybe we're too distended as well. So distension is a very important part of imaging polyps. So let's take the distension out a bit. And then uh, if you don't get too much fluid in, then we'll have another look for that thing. And I need to distend a little bit to find it again. Um, but, okay, here it is. You can see now I can get much more view on it because of the less distension. And uh, here, again, the, the pattern is starting to break down, but it's certainly not completely broken down. So this would be um, something that I would be calling regularly irregular. And, and this one is much more um, heterogeneous. That is, uh, over the surface, there's different areas present than the other one. Uh, and again, you can see here that the pattern is becoming irregular, but not completely irregular. So this is JNET 2B. So JNET 2A suggests the presence of low-grade dysplasia, JNET 2B, high-grade dysplasia or early uh, cancer. And that makes a big difference as to what you should do for the JNET 2As. For the regulars, you can um, uh, resect them safely piecemeal because uh, those lesions are limited to mucosa. Mucosa has no in fact, access to lymphatics, uh, but the 2Bs and the 3s. Uh, they need to be uh, resected on block or the threes potentially with surgery. There you go. Bit of a tour of JNET via three uh, rectal polyps. Come see us in um, start of October for Geeks 4 where you're going to get loads and loads more about that and learn about our simplification for, um, for the JNET classification uh, to help you in your everyday endoscopy practice.